Hello you half-empty bottles of vaginal mucus, Jim Sterling here and this is Nier Automata. This is the latest in the hit Nier series, which is also part of the Drakengard series, just to be extra confusing for you. This game is pretty good so far. I covered the demo, I did the impressions of the demo a couple, was it months back? At, at least or at least several weeks back, it was a while back anyway, and I was quite pleased with it, it looked very promising. Uh, I was someone who had a lot of problems with the first Nier, I said this in my first impressions video, wasn't the biggest fan of it, very frustratedly. I wanted to like it a lot more than I did. I eventually considered it was an okay game, I was like, it's okay. But a lot of the thing, like when it tried to do different things, when it tried to play with genres, when it tried to do funny, quirky things, it would do them a lot more than once to the point where the novelty wore off and I had some issues with its combat and just just a lot of um, structural problems I had with the game but I, I saw what it was doing and I liked what it was going for and I really really wanted to like it. Uh, so far with Neo Automata I am not having those same reservations. I am enjoying it. It is again a weird game which I have no issue with uh, the, but the combat is just Wonderful. It's it's wonderful to play. Very fast paced. Um, someone compared it to Bayonetta. I saw in comments. Some people were upset because we wrote it off on Podquisition. Um, I think that's just because none of us have had much time with it yet. Um, I haven't had a great deal of time. I'm still you know carving my way through uh, Breath of the Wild, which fingers crossed I might be able to review this weekend or at least early next week. Uh, hopefully I can get that knocked out the way and then I can focus on Near Automata. Or one two switch. But yes, I wanted to at least get some thoughts of Nero and Martin out there before I, you know, can properly get into the game and get a review worked on, uh, because it, they very positive, very positive thoughts so far on it. Uh, it is another open world game, and I am, as I as I said on the the uh, King's Tale video so burnt out on them. Again, the thought of playing Ghost Recon Wildlands, which some people have said is alright, like some people have said it's not a bad game, but just the thought of the thought of playing an Ubisoft open world game as well, on top of Breath of the Wild and Nier Automata and having come off uh, Horizon very recently. I can't I can't stand much more of it, you know? I need some I, I need some linearity. I hate that that word was, was treated as a dirty one, last generation. Uh, I, I was always against that, the idea that linear is a bad thing. Uh, but it has led to a lot of this, which isn't necessarily bad. I mean, Nier Automata is doing the open world thing, as far as I can tell, quite well. Uh, it's more than welcome to do it. Uh, but with every, almost every game Ubisoft does being one, I think For Honor was a break from tradition yeah. there. And, you know, EA wanting to do loads and, and everything, everything having to be open world. It's, it's too much. It's too much. Just give me some fucking corridors. Uh, but that it's a bit unfair to just rag on a genre that Nier is in while I'm actually trying to be relatively praiseworthy of Nier. Here I am going up against uh, enemies that are twice my level. Uh, these are... These are cute robots. It's one thing about this game is the enemies are almost all adorable and an early mission which we'll have spoilers for, warning, it's an early mission but there will be some story spoilers coming um, into this video later, uh, does provide some context I guess for some of it, uh, but it's a, when, when you start seeing them wearing little capes like that, like you just want to be all, oh, you don't really want to smash them up so much, but I did, because they drop items and, and you get experience for it, which ultimately is more important. It's just in a desert area here. Um, a lot of this footage, I mean most of this, in fact all of the footage from here on out, is based on a mission that goes out in the desert, which doesn't do a great job of showing off how the game looks. Um, some of the earlier footage I had where you see some of the greenery, this game look, looks quite pretty. Um, it does suffer from what Nia, and to a lesser extent Drakengard, have, have always suffered from, which is the visuals always seem a little bit washed out, a little bit devoid of, of vibrancy. And that may be a deliberate stylistic choice, 
many games, in fact. It's something I've criticised in several games. It's a deliberate... I don't know if it's a filter or just a, a, a colour idea that they... Oh, this, I thought that was a box. It's not. It's just an upturned locker. Um, but a lot of Japanese games in particular tend to go for this sort of washed-out look where the colour just seems a little bit drained. And there just seems to be a little bit of a, of a pallor over everything. And it's never been a, a style I've, I've been particularly fond of. And they lessen it in this. It, it was it was more uh, obvious in the original Nier. Uh, it's not as clear here. There's a lot more there's a lot more vibrancy, a lot more contrast with the colour, a lot more clashing going on, which I like. I like high contrast. I like um, colourful clashes. I think they work better in in HD. I always said the great tragedy of the last generation is that it saw the onset of brown and grey drab looking games at the same time as high definition became the new standard because bright like Viva Piñata was the best looking game last generation I, I said it before I'll say it again and some people scoff at that mostly because Viva Piñata is not you know some big cool hardcore game but it was one of the most vibrant, colourful games of the generation. And the textures they used and everything with the cartoon aesthetic, just it looked gorgeous in high definition. It, it did. Uh, and as, as graphically impressive as something like Gears of War is, and it does look visually stunning at times, uh, it's not as beautiful because it's just not as colourful. If, if I'm making sense, I feel like I'm. I feel like I should be making sense, but I might not be. I might just be talking bollocks. Anyway, here's a big robot, which also just looks adorable because his little head's in his bollocks. Look, it's got a little. It's got a face where its bollocks would be. If if robots have bollocks, these ones don't. Or the JJs, which they might have imaginary the JJs, which we'll find out a little bit later in the video. It's a particularly fascinating scene that we've got coming up but just smashing up this big row but he's got a, a normal head on top of his you know where it where a head would ordinarily be on a human body but he's just got this little one there just in the groinal region just kind of having a little look around just seeing seeing what life might be like from from a genital perspective and i'll be talking about that more in my upcoming book genital perspectives with jim sterling might make that an actual book. So anyway, this is where things get a bit weird. Here we see the robots, which have started wearing clothes and masks and things, um, acting a bit humanish. And yep, those robots are fucking. Just uh, wander around among the robots here. I actually, on the first pass, didn't notice the robots boinking each other in sort of a traditional boinkage situation because I was too busy looking at this one on the right fucking the ground and the one on the left eating the other one out that appears to be Robot Cunnilingus that's Robot Cunnilingus everyone unfortunately we couldn't stare at it as long as I wanted to stare at it that would have been premium gym position b-roll material if I'd have gotten that on a constant go but you can't have everything so we're just gonna fight all these robots who previously were rutting like dogs Break up their dirty little sin party. Disgusting fucking beasts. Humping in the dirt. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so yeah, these robots are just adorbs. They've got cute little masks and little capes and cloaks and things on. I mean, the fact that they were moments ago. Just getting up to all sorts of unchristian unpleasantness is neither here nor there, because they're still adorable even when they are debasing themselves. Even if it is 120 days in Sodom, but with robots. They're still kind of cute, the robots. And that's... that's something. I always feel like I'm playing this game wrong when I play it, though. I'm trying to dodge. Sometimes I dodge alright. Sometimes I kill things, sometimes I get hit. But... I feel like there's something about it I'm missing, like I'm not using the shooty pod enough, or I'm doing something wrong. I don't know what it is, but hopefully I'll get more confident with it. 
because it does feel like the comic does have a really nice flow to it. And the story, like, I love all this, just the creepy... They do it at the beginning as well, um, and maybe I had it on the demo footage, but just the way they build noise is incredible. As you fight, and they're just repeating the phrase over and over again until it's just this cacophony. It's, um, they, they do sound really well in this game, I think. Make it nice and creepy. Again, I'm talking over the cutscene. You know, if you want the, to see the cutscene, watch a, a, a long play that someone doesn't talk over or play it yourself, whatever. You've got subtitles on. Look at that man's ass. An android? Or is it a man? No. We don't is know, because it's a sort of robot a person machine. with smooth action man junk there in between the... I say junk, it's a lack of. Junkless. Tis a junkless robot. Action Man Sephiroth. Smooth for your enjoyment. So just gonna beat the shit out of uh, this dude, no questions asked. Very naked, very upset. Very, very upset. Doesn't like androids. You're an android. That's the premise of the game. You're uh, an android built by humans, presumably, to take back Earth from the robots, which we're told, took over and were sent by aliens, Dodge. but things like this mission cast doubt about all that, doesn't it? Saw an article today talking about this game's thousands and thousands of years worth of history that sort of serves as the backstory. Uh, personally, I'm not quite sure where it fits in the timeline with everything, because I, I haven't played Nier since it first came out. Well, I, I think since before it first came out, I think I, had, I reviewed it. Um, I think I got an early review personally back in the day for Destructoid. Don't know. Interestingly, actually, I did get review copy for this one. Um, Square Enix Japan normally keep me away from things, but they actually did give me a review copy for this one. It was on launch day, though, so they did keep me away from those early embargoed reviews that went up. But it seems like not a huge deal of those went up. Um, like I said in that wild card, Jim Position, uh, a number of publishers are really severely limiting now who gets what, and they want to try and limit codes, especially you know, ones ones that were intended for launch day reviews. They want to restrict that to uh, reviewers, critics, who they think they can trust more, who they think, you know, won't be unpredictable in their assessment. Just basically just trying to stack the deck, you know. And you see why they do it. You, you want, I, I can understand the logic of it. It's a bit shitty, but it's not like I don't get it. It's just a shame. You know, it's a bit of a sad shame. And it, it speaks of a lack of confidence, I feel. Uh, but, you know, I did get one at least, which is a st uh, it's a step above just being ignored. Uh, which was the odd dichotomy with Square Enix, where the European version of the, of, you know, the Europe side of the business were fine with talking to me, giving me codes and all that. Uh, and they're the side I slagged off more. I don't have much beef with Square Enix Japan. But they were the ones who were more paranoid about me, uh, at least according to what I heard. But seems unfounded with this one so far. Uh, the uh, at least the early reviews have been very favourable towards it. If I'm if I'm correct, it's uh, uh, the second highest rated of the year so far after Breath of the Wild. And we're, we're certainly early in the year right now. But it's it's been a heck of a year I think so far with Neo and Horizon and Breath of the Wild, which you know. You all know by now I'm not going to rank as high as everyone else, but I still think it's a really, really good game. Uh, this, um, I, I think I already mentioned Horizon. Um, and, the, the, it's, the, and we got some really promising stuff coming up as well. Um, I've already got at least two potential candidates for Game of the Year reward material at the end of the year. And that was by January. Really pissed off now. His, his naked, smooth friend. That's... That's their name is Naked Smooth Friend. I didn't think about... Oh, actually, the thing that really fucked me up about that scene was how he picked the other one up, but his hair 
didn't uh, adhere to gravity. It was just stuck to his back, even when he was held up like that. The hair should have been... Well, that's the most fucked up part of the video. It's like Popeye's hat, how that never comes off in a Popeye cartoon, but... This, we're supposed to take it a bit more seriously, and I can't when I'm seeing hair just stuck to someone's back like that. Fucked up. It's a dead players, I think. Something like that. Anyway, video's more or less over. This is just sort of the, the wrap-up to this mission now. Hope you liked the video. Uh, and I certainly am enjoying it, I've got to say. Uh, I'm looking forward to being able to shelve Breath of the Wild somewhat and focus a lot more on this. Not that I'm not enjoying Breath of the Wild, but I've now played enough of this to where I am severely intrigued and want to see Stop. more. Which is a good sign. A very good first impression, or gym impression, if you will. <laughs> I've never seen a machine like that before. <laughs>